Hello, this is Janet from the West End Library in Laurelton, Pennsylvania. And my monthly book review for this month will be The Fourth Enemy by Anne Perry. This review of book, um, The Fourth Enemy, is set in London in 1912 at the end of the Victorian period. A fraud case is the main focus of this novel, the sixth in the Daniel Pitt series by Anne Perry. The law firm that Daniel Pitt works for, Croft & Gibson, had just been assigned a new director by the firm's founder, Marcus Croft. The new director, Gideon Hunter, has a wonderful reputation for winning court cases, and Marcus feels he is best suited for the directorship position. Daniel has been recently married to Marcus Croft's daughter, Miriam, who is a forensic scientist. Being a woman in such a high esteemed position typically held by men has proven herself to be a reliable and detail-oriented person on a witness stand. A friend of Daniel Pitt, Inspector Ian Frobisher, brings to Daniel's attention evidence he has obtained regarding a huge fraud issue that a very wealthy man by the name of Malcolm Vane is being accused of. Most people do not want to get on the wrong side of Malcolm Vane, not only due to his large amounts of wealth, but mainly because it is believed that he has helped a lot of people with debt issues. What is uncovered is that Vane's lending and borrowing monies is all part of a huge hedge fund scam. Most of the people he leads to believe he is helping out financially in the end find out that their initial investment and following interest payments are non-existent. Those monies and monies invested by wealthy individuals in this pyramid scam can be found to buy the support of people in the government as well as important people in other countries. Vane's appeal goes further than just money. He feigns to support many philanthropic efforts which appeal to the general public. Daniel's firm has taken on being the prosecutors in the trial following Vane's arrest, and Daniel has been asked to assist in the prosecution. Key witnesses that Daniel finds in interviews begins to be involved in situations in order to keep them from testifying. One witness is hit by a vehicle, another is murdered, and another is kidnapped. Daniel's wife Miriam becomes involved in the case not only through her father Marcus, but she does the autopsy on the witness that is murdered. What had first been thought of as suicide is determined to be murder. Vain, is very vain, as his name implies, feels he is above reproach because he can buy and sell anyone he pleases. He continues to move forward with his agendas as if there's nothing wrong, appealing to the general people, promoting change, especially the women's suffrage movement. As more information is gathered and the autopsy results of the murdered witness come to the forefront, the evidence towards Vane's innocence begins to dwindle. Daniel's father, Thomas, also has an interest in this case from a government standpoint, but due to his position, cannot divulge any information outright to Daniel, but does give suggestions. I have read the other five Daniel Pitt books and have thoroughly enjoyed them. I enjoy reading books that take place in the Victorian era where changes in dress, the introduction of automobiles, and changes in society in general are happening rapidly. I look forward to another episode in the saga of Daniel Pitt.